Hi, uh, last topic in uh, unit 5 is uh, sperm banks and ethical issues of test tube baby. The learning objective of this topic is to understand the concept of a sperm bank, to understand the underlying ethical issues in case of test tube baby procedures. The session outcome is understanding the concept of sperm bank, exploring the ethical issues of test tube baby. By the end of this class, you will have an idea of what is sperm bank and what are the ethical issues related to test tube baby procedure. Okay. Let's see one by one. The first one is sperm bank. Now, what is a sperm bank? Uh, which is also known as a semen bank or cryo bank is a facility or an ent enterprise which purchases, stores and sells human semen. So, here it refers to human semen. Sperm bank can be even in animal husbandry where it stores the semen of animals. We are talking about the sperm bank, bank of humans. Okay. And as per the present current rule, the sperm bank must be a separate entity. Okay. And uh, that supplies the donor sperm to individuals. Okay, or some uh, most of the times to the fertility center. As per the present rule, the fertility centers or clinics cannot store the spermatozoans. That should be collected from the third party only. Okay, or it may be a facility which is run by a clinic or other medical establishment. Okay, exclusively for their patients, but they cannot store it in their clinic. That's very very important. That should be stored somewhere else. Okay. And uh, why do men normally prefer to bank their sperms? So, what is the reason? Why someone want to store their sp sperm or semen uh, in a bank? Uh, there are few conditions. I have listed, listed three. There are many more. Okay. The first one is cancer. So, if a person is suffering from malignant cancer, and if he is going for some chemotherapeutic medication, and uh, then it might actually harm his uh, spermatozoans. Uh, the quality and the quantity as well as the function of the spermatozoma. So, if he knows that he is going for uh, such kind of treatment, then one can store his uh, spermatozoma prior to the medication so that he can in future have the children. Next one is travel. So, if those men who travel a lot may also store their sperm for different reasons. One is they may not be available throughout the year. So, if they won't plan to have children, so even in, in their absence, it can be done. Or if they have the chances of, okay, when someone is traveling, there is very uncertainty that they can return. So, um, in such cases too, one might prefer to store the spermatozoa if he want to continue his generation. So, in that case, one can uh, store the spermatozoans. And the third one, uh, is surgery. So, if a person undergoes uh, contraceptive uh, surgery, you, know, you have seen uh, two types of surgeries, tubectomy and vasectomy. So, in case if a person goes for um, uh, vasectomy, recanalization uh, success rate is uh, uh, nearly 40%, sometimes even it, uh, less than that. So, in such cases, what one can do is that before going for a vasectomy, he can store the spermatozoans. once. Uh, so that um, uh, in future, if they plan to have a baby again, they can that that spermatozoa can be used. Okay, so these are certain reasons why men go for sperm I mean uh, sperm banking or semen storage. There is another uh, reason also. Nowadays, it has become like a business where healthy people store their spermatozoans which can be like donors they can be used by those couple who cannot have children okay uh, partners who cannot have children that can also be done sometimes it is donated freely and most of the times it is for uh, some payment okay so that has become a sort of business too so this just as an additional information that's all now, uh, during sperm banking, that means when a person stores their sperm, okay, they cannot store it freely, like uh, without any screening process and all, they'll have to undergo certain screening processes, okay. So, there is a specific uh, requirement, they should be, uh, they should uh, actually qualify with the, um, uh, regarding to the age and the medical history, okay. So, they have to submit their medical history also and usually they screen the potential donors, uh, for different disorders, diseases like genetic disease, they will screen for their genetic diseases 
they'll screen for their uh, chromosomal abnormalities okay and also for the sexually transmitted uh, infections which can get transmitted through the semen that is passed okay so chromosomal abnormalities will increase as a person ages so that's why age is an important factor there okay and even the medical history so if a person is donating unhealthy spermatozoa which doesn't have the capacity to fertilize an egg or to penetrate an egg then such process is totally best so a number of screening techniques are available through which healthy spermatozoans are screened mainly for genetic disorders and chromosomal abnormalities plus sexually transmitted infection uh, infections stis okay what do they do in the, after collecting the spermatozoa once it is collected from the donor it will be processed okay usually they wash the sperm sample okay and uh, so that they can extract the sperm from rest of the material because semen contains other materials also uh, we i think we have discussed in ivf so to uh, avoid unwanted materials a washing will be done and after that okay a cryoprotectant is added to the semen so that it can be stored without any harm in a frozen storage okay and uh, usually one sample can uh, produce nearly 1 to 20 vials or straws uh, usually depending upon the quality of the spermatozoa and the quality of the ejaculation okay and also depends on whether it is a washed a, a sample or unwashed sample and uh, usually uh, these sperms are stored in 0.4 to and 1 ml uh, vials okay so depending upon the necessity they will be used uh, in future and cryogenic preservation includes preserving these spermatozoan vials in a liquid nitrogen tanks okay uh, so that's about the sperm bank so usually what they do in sperm sperm bank like bank what do you do in bank you keep your money in bank but sperm bank the spermatozoans are preserved for future use either by the same person i mean the family or maybe as a donor okay but for both the purposes this can be used Uh, and uh, how it is done usually the um, donor okay will uh, uh, give the sa sample of the sperm and then first in the beginning he will be screened for any kind of diseases okay disorders chromosomal abnormalities once uh, he qualifies the screening test his age and other things will also matter and after that the sample will be collected the sample will be uh, most of the times they'll be washed for any unwanted materials and then it is stored in the liquid nitrogen okay in separate uh, entities or facilities so whenever somebody needs them for ivf okay those samples will be taken okay and uh, uh, in case a donor is um, sperm is collected from a donor uh, uh, the his uh, name uh, should not be revealed to the people who accept it so that is uh, that is the rule okay ne neither the donor will come to know who has uh, access for his spermatozoans or sperms uh, nor the acceptors okay so this is very important uh, confidential uh, i mean uh, process or procedure okay so next one is ethical issue of uh, ivf for test tube baby so we have seen how uh, ivf is done or uh, test tube babies are born okay now is it free of ethical issue no there are like it is we are going again something that is not normal so definitely there will be ethical issues related number of ethical issues have been raised by different uh, religious uh, uh, groups as well as some other uh, like um, activist now let's say one by one few of these ethical ethical issues related to ivf the first issue is the possible wrong done to the pre embryo so what is this so usually uh, we know that during ivf multiple uh, ova are collected and they will be released to the petri dish and that means more than one blastocyst will be formed if you remember i, I said that uh, on one or two blastocyst will be released to the uterine cavity for implantation the rest of the blastocyst if formed they will be stored or frozen for future use in case the first one fails now in case first one is successful then there is no use of the second and the third or third or fourth blastocyst that means it will be destroyed okay so uh, what happens now see we are destroying a pre embryo okay and that means it is a wrong done to this embryo that has been destroyed 
Sometimes what happens even after releasing into the uterine cavity, okay, if two of them are released by natural method itself, only one gets implanted, the other one is destroyed. Again, one of the embryo is destroyed there. That is the wrong done to the embryo. So, this is one major ethical issue. We are actually destroying, we are actually uh, barring a particular embryo from its development, from its future life. So, this is a major ethical issue. The second issue is the possible wrong done to the infertile couple for the expected offspring. Now, what happens here? See, multiple pregnancy is very common, I said, in case of IVF. Okay, and this is a threat to physical and mental health of the mother. So, mother will have to go through a lot of physical stress as well as the mental stress during pregnancy. That is more in case of multiple pregnancies. Okay, so she might uh, suffer from high blood pressure, uterine bleeding, sometimes even complications at, at the time of birth. Okay, uh, or maybe at the time of cesarean uh, sections. So, these are all the problems that will be faced by the mother and this happens because of IVF due to the multiple births. So, okay. so this is one more ethical issue. Okay. The next one is and the possible wrong done to the offspring itself. Okay, we, let's say that the implantation is successful and the baby grows and we said that there is a chance of multiple pregnancies. Now, if one only one baby is growing, it is going to get all the nutrients. But in case of multiple births, what happens? We have seen that when the number of births are more than one or two, usually some of the embryos, some of the uh, baby or fetus, they will be malnourished and they will be lower in weight. Okay, so that means that child, that one of them or two of them will not be getting enough nutrients or all of them may not get the enough nutrients and there may, might be premature uh, birth or there may be, might be low birth weight. So, this is the uh, wrongdoing we are uh, done to the babies that are grown uh, during IVF. So, these are the uh, certain uh, ethical issues that are related. In addition to that, uh, the Roman Catholic Church has also raised uh, objections on IVF because uh, one is as we said destruction of human embryo okay, that is not used for implantation and uh, both in vivo, in vivo and in vitro and uh, because of in vitro fertilization by a donor other than the husband, so might pose a uh, major threat to the marital context. Okay, so anyone can go for IVF, uh, IVF uh, depending upon the rules and regulations that are posed in a particular nation. Okay, so that means it is a it is going to pose a threat to the marital uh, system that is present in the society. So that might be a major threat too. Okay, so these are these are the ethical issues associated with the IVF. So that's all for the topics. Um, we are completing unit five. Okay, and the summary of this topic is uh, this, what uh, we have discussed about sperm banking. So, sperm banking or sperm bank or cryo bank means preserving sperm or semen for future fertility. Okay, uh, in a fully uh, fledged uh, fertility clinic, the semen is processed. Okay, the motile sperm fraction is extracted and is then stored in liquid nitrogen. Okay, in Devers uh, method under minus 196 degree Celsius. Okay that can be used during uh, fertility procedures and ethical issue as I said it, it destroys the unimplanted uh, embryos it might be a major uh, threat to the marital uh, uh, system present in the society plus it is also okay wrongdoing to those um, mother who have who will have to undergo lots of stress physically and mentally plus it is also wrongdoing to those multiple births who will have to suffer from malnutrition and low weight and even premature birth sometimes there are chances that in multiple births one or two may not survive okay so these are all the things about the sperm bank and ethical issue and these are my references for this class thank you